It all began with a dangerous expedition. A group of mercenaries is assigned a mission to travel to a tropical island where dinosaurs have reappeared after genetic experiments and obtain the blood of three giant reptiles. Officially, this is done for medical purposes, but unofficially, it is for huge profits. However, in addition to the classic predators, something even more terrifying awaits them, a laboratory mutant created without regard for common sense. The story begins in 2008 on the isolated island of St. Hubert. Here, scientists are resurrecting prehistoric monsters, but the negligence of the staff leads to an emergency. The laboratory is urgently evacuated. One of the researchers does not manage to escape, and unfortunately for him, he is followed by the result of secret research, Distortus Rex, a hybrid of a dinosaur and a xenomorph. The monster devours the poor man, and the island remains under the control of its new masters. 17 years pass. The dinosaurs could have spread across the planet, but the cold climate forces them to return to the tropics. However, from time to time, individual specimens still find their way into civilization, such as the giant that caused a traffic jam in the center of New York City. Martin, a representative of a large pharmaceutical corporation, finds Zora, a specialist in dirty operations. He persuades her to take on a dangerous task, to obtain the blood of three rare species of dinosaurs, aquatic, flying, and terrestrial. The blood is supposedly needed to create a cure for heart disease. In reality, there is much more at stake, billions of dollars in profits. To complete the mission, they need a paleontologist. The choice falls on Henry, who has just been fired from a museum. They rent a ship from an old acquaintance of Zora's, Captain Duncan. Meanwhile, a family of tourists is vacationing in the same waters, Ruben Delgado with his daughters Teresa and Isabel, as well as the older daughter's boyfriend Javier. First, they see a pair of Spinosaurus, and then they encounter a Mosasaurus, a giant sea lizard. It capsizes their yacht, trapping Javier in the cabin. Ruben tries to pull him out, but they all end up at the bottom of the boat. Javier, thrown by the mast, swims towards them, with the lizard rushing after him. The boy manages to climb onto the overturned yacht, and the predator loses interest in him. A distress signal is sent to the mercenary's ship. Duncan convinces them, and they rescue the tourists. Now it's time to get down to business. The first target is the water giant. Zora prepares to shoot, and Henrik secures her with a rope. But at the last moment, the Mazasaurus dives, raising a wave, and the shot hits the water. The operation began promisingly. The Mazasaurus was spotted, and Zora, secured by a safety rope, fired the syringe. The shot hit its target, blood collected in the capsule, which flew into the air and gently descended on a parachute, landing right in the sailor's hands. The first stage was complete. But their joy was short-lived. They were only a few meters from the island when their path was blocked by Spinosaurus hunting in pairs with the old sea lizard. One delivered a control bite directly to the guard, while the others began to strike the boat, rocking it dangerously. The passengers barely managed to stay on board, and Reuben pulled Isabella out of the giant's jaws at the last moment. To escape pursuit, Duncan steered the boat toward the reefs, hoping to maneuver between the rocks. Reuben, fearing that they would crash, told Teresa to send a distress signal. But Martin, obsessed with his mission, demanded silence. The quarrel led to Teresa falling overboard. The pharmacist did not rush to save the girl. But Javier instantly jumped into the water after his beloved, and Reuben and his younger daughter soon followed him. The crew jumped overboard, while Duncan remained at the helm and crashed directly onto the beach of St. Hubert. The rest swam to shore. The landing did not bring joy, as soon as one of the women stepped onto the sand, she was grabbed by a Spinosaurus. Zora reminded them that the mission had not been cancelled. A helicopter was supposed to pick them up in a day, but it would land on the opposite side of the island. By the river, Martin found military dog tags in the water. They belonged to the helicopter pilot, whose body was stuck in the branches of trees above the water. Taking the dead man's gun, he joined the others. Meanwhile, the Delgado family and Javier made their way to the island through a cave and also headed inland, but when they noticed movement in the bushes, they changed their route. At night, Isabella fed the little Aquila until he fell asleep at her feet. In the morning, Zora's group stumbled upon titanosaurs, which, busy with mating season, did not even notice the humans. Zora seized the moment, fired, and obtained a second blood sample. Target number three remained, Quetzalcoatl. 
At that time, Delgado and his team were descending the mountainside toward the river. On the other bank, Teresa noticed a pier and a landing craft. After crossing the river, she discovered the half-eaten corpse of a dinosaur, which Adelphosuchus was already feeding on. But it suddenly ran away. A Tyrannosaurus was dozing nearby in the grass. Teresa quietly approached the vehicle and found a backpack with an inflatable boat. But the peace did not last long. While they were sailing away, the Tyrannosaurus woke up, decided that a light breakfast would not hurt, and entered the water. Catching up with the boat, it capsized it with a blow from its snout, and the people flew into the current like meatballs. The Tyrannosaurus tries to grab them, but a narrow stone passage saves the people, the giant's head cannot fit through it. Meanwhile, Zora's group descends to the nest of the Quetzalcoatl. They decide to take DNA from the egg. Henry admits that the company will simply make money from the medicine, but in order to help everyone, the samples must be made public. The return of the enraged bird interrupts the conversation. During the fight, the capsule with the sample flies away, and Henry falls into the jungle, surviving thanks to the trees. At sunset, the Delgado family reaches the research base by boat, where Zora's group soon arrives with three samples. Martin reveals the truth, experiments to create mutant dinosaurs were being conducted here. Teresa tells everyone how Martin deliberately did not help her out of the water during the attack. The conversation quickly turned into an open quarrel, and the island smelled not only of the jungle but also of impending trouble. The pharmacist's weapons quickly cooled the conflict between the groups. Martin suggested forgetting their grievances and simply waiting for the helicopter that Zora was supposed to send. But the silence did not last long, a flock of mutated pterosaurs descended on the base. Their attack divided the people. The Delgado family hid in a store, Martin and Zora took cover under a car, and Duncan and Henry found the entrance to an underground bunker. In the store, Isabella noticed a familiar aquilip and fed it. But the joy of reunion was interrupted by a pterosaur that broke through the roof. The girl hid in the refrigerator, covering the glass with her jacket. Her father distracted the predator, and the family was able to reunite and escape into the sewer. In the bunker, Duncan studied a map of the complex and discovered that the boat was still at the dock. Through a hole in the roof, they spotted a helicopter approaching. Duncan sent Henry to the helipad to delay the pilots until everyone else could gather, but Desteroth Rex was already prowling nearby. Meanwhile, Martin shot the pterosaur, found the keys to the jeep, grabbed the blood samples, and drove away, leaving the others behind. Zora, hiding in the bushes, saw one of the pterosaurs climb into the sewer and realized that the civilians were there. She followed him. At the scene, Henry signaled the pilots, but the helicopter didn't have time to land. Distortex Rex grabbed it and tore it to pieces like a tin can. Henry returned to Duncan, who had already found the Delgado family in the sewer. Together, they made their way to the pier through underground tunnels. Martin rushed there in his jeep. Zora caught up with the group and shot the mutant that was chasing them. At the exit of the tunnel, a grate blocked their way. Isabella crawled through the bars to open the lock, but then the six-legged Distortex appeared. His attention was distracted by Martin's jeep. In the blink of an eye, the predator tore the car apart along with the driver. Zora grabbed the suitcase with the samples, and everyone rushed to the pier. But the boat's lowering mechanism had jammed over the years, and while they were trying to fix it, Distortus caught up with them. Then Duncan remembered what he had done during the first expedition. Grabbing a flare, he distracted the mutant and jumped into the water, dragging him with him. While the others launched the boat, Zora saw the flames die in the darkness. Her last friend had sacrificed himself. The boat pulled away from the shore just as Destructor returned, but he was too late and disappointed, only growled. Unexpectedly, Duncan had survived, he had swum away from the predator. Taking him with them, the group headed out to sea, away from the island and closer to land. They were accompanied by a pod of dolphins welcoming the first rays of dawn. Henry asked Zora what she was going to do with the samples. The answer was simple, make them the property of all mankind so that everyone could have access to the cure. That's where the story ends, unlike the endless milking of the franchise.